Hey guys, welcome to the video today. I will be doing a Fine Peaks Storm Shield Defense walkthrough on how to build each and every amplifier. But for today, today only, we're going to be doing the main Storm Shield Defense. I will build it up as if it was your first Storm Shield Defense. You know, you just entered Twine, you gotta build this up. Um, I'll do my best to work within the confines of the shield itself. I know it's pretty pretty short in the first run, but uh, we're going to do our best to go through this here. So stay with me. This is going to take a lot of metal. Now I'm using a Sarahotep, which is just a reskin Dragon Scorch. Um, if I really wanted to save on resources, I would use my Power Base Nox and put cat structure or hot fixer in the support slot to give a 10 or i think it might be 15 percent building bonus but i'm not especially worried about it right now so what you want to do is you just want to build it up there and then of course we're going to want to upgrade it Now for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to upgrade all of these to level 3 because that would take forever. Um, but I'm going to put all of them to level 2 so that you could see the difference of where I leave things at level 1. Um, however, this, this amplifier isn't too finicky on pathing for the zombies. It's pretty straightforward actually. So we don't really have to differentiate between level 1, level 2, or level 3 walls to influence their pathing a little bit more. Um, so we're going to start with the east side. Uh, it's the side that gets attacked the most. Um, as you get up in Twine Peaks, that doesn't need to be there actually. Unnecessary. As you get up into Twine Peaks, it's not something you want to neglect. So this is the side you want to build the best. So I'm, I'm putting some floors here. You can put some healing pads there if you want. You can put a defender pad there if you spend the skill points to unlock it. Um, I'm going to make my floor pieces out of stone. Not going to worry too much about it. Oops. I do have my turbo building on. Uh, so I found it annoying at first. You know, you waste a lot of materials, but I really just I, I couldn't stop myself once I started. So this is our basic outline so far. Turn it all level two. Again, if you're doing this on your storm shield, you're gonna want to turn most of this to level three. Um, especially in terms of the north and east direction of your main storm shield defense uh, because these do get hit by purple lavers. So you definitely want to turn the main part of the base to level 3. Um, do I want floors here? Now the same way with the buffer shield on the main storm shield defense, we're also going to put a buffer shield on the trap tunnels here. This will serve, you know, if you want to fight in your trap tunnels while there are purple lobbers, you could certainly do so. Oops. Now if you want to see a full finished product, you go through my Fine Peak Storm Shield Defense 10 walkthrough. Put it up on YouTube, just search my gamer tag. Uh, as it stands right now, we're just going to be building a basic outline. And then I'm going to go through a more detailed walkthrough of why everything matters. And 
Keep in mind, all of this should be level two. Or, sorry, level three. Keep all your buildings here level three. This is the side that gets attacked the most. Uh, we're going to wait a bit before we trap out here. Just going to make sure all my walls and whatnot are up. Leave that open in case a flinger throws something nearby. The zombies will want to come to me instead. Put this to level 2. Just so you guys understand that there, there needs to be reinforcement everywhere. There shouldn't be a wall or ceiling piece that you don't put to level 3 on the east side. Can't. The waves that come... Oh, sorry. I'm, these two... Maybe this, this wall included. These two floor pieces plus this wall right here. You could all keep those at level 1 or level 2. It doesn't really matter. But everything else, level 3. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to leave those at level 1. So you can tell the level difference. Sorry. Doing a whole lot of upgrading. And what's good build without uh, a few thousand metal, right? At least it's not as much of a grind as it was in Legacy when, you know, we had a stack of 999. You serious? Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend bringing people into your Stormfield defenses if you're going to build this. Um, simply because it'll be easily soloable on this side at least and the amount of propane tanks that would be coming in the initial waves I actually put that to three um, would probably destroy your tunnel if you just brought in some randoms because let's be honest there's always that one jarhead soldier who gets the idea in their head that they should throw a grenade down a tunnel because they're maybe they're a little bit flustered and you know, obviously there's reasons and that's part of the allure to Fortnite. however there goes your tunnel, right? So best to do this by yourself if you build this, you know, easily soloable. I brought this into Twine 10. Um, I did Twine 9 all the way with my 106 wall launchers. Um, if you're going to do Twine 10, I'd recommend having 130 wall launchers. These are legacy, so uh, they're not going to be the best. If you fully legendary a wall launcher with these exact perks, uh, maybe switch out another reload for a durability. Because the legendary reload, I think, gives you 28% or so on the fully legendary wall launchers. But for the sake of this, you know, all the way up to 9, wall launchers are absolutely fine. We're going to put some wall dynamos here. Uh, on the back side here, you really could put some wall darts. Just different, differentiate between... You know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Activation times. So you really want to differentiate between activation times. So when you launch them back here, these will go off. These will take, you know, I think 10 seconds or so to re reload. 10.5, as you saw there. While the wall darts, 5 seconds. So basically, if things are walking through here and the wall launcher is already off, the... Wall dart on the back side can't hurt them. Now, as far as traps go, you could tell that this is a standard 2x2 two two square, right? Let's so, generally, 9 times out of 10, people want to... I didn't craft any of my legendaries. I'll just use these for now. People want to put a electric field here and then a gas trap over here. Not a bad exercise. For the higher levels, you want to put gas traps doubled up and the reason for that is because there are just so many enemies spawning on the outside here and we don't have a vanguard defense um, and what i mean by vanguard defense is some people like to go out here and build this big old you know cover the spawn has has it all kind of thing however to cover the entire spawn put gas traps or electric fields depending on what your preference you're using up at least 
72 structures. The 2x2 two two behind me um, uses up 26. So as far as structures go, you save structures, you're actually more deadly because it's more concise. You know, pretty much all the allures of a trap tunnel versus just, you know, spreading out your defense and making it very wide. You know, you're going to save on resources, you're going to save yourself time, and probably effort as a result. Now again, the whole entire tunnel should be level level 3. These sidewalls, you could probably leave them at level 2. I wouldn't recommend anything lower than 2. Definitely put these to level 3. Sometimes zombies will want to beat against them. I use slow spikes here. Now, playing through Twine Peaks, I had a large abundance of carved twine. Now, it doesn't drop as often as it used to. You don't want to put that wall there, otherwise they'll come around the corner and just completely skip that ceiling, which isn't bad. I mean, you got enough damage between all the other squares where you could probably just cut this off, so... That's what I'll do, actually. The only thing that'll come around here is the stray blaster. Got some wall darts there and there. Dynamo, dynamo. Now, to be a little bit tricky here, what's gonna happen is we're gonna come down here. This. These are useless. Um, you see, this is uh, this is the benefit to having already played. I can tell you guys, and you will learn. So they'll come down here. Then they'll want to immediately direct their path here. So by the time they get onto the square, you can see from here to here is the quickest point. If I just walk forward, I'll probably be a little bit there, right where the square is. So as they walk across, this is the first point that the wall launcher, by the time they get about here, the wall launcher should activate. Um, and then they'd be blown against this wall. Which means they would stay underneath the gas trap for double damage, because the gas trap will naturally do the affliction damage with that are already taking, but it'll also deal damage over time by itself. Cause a bit of tick damage, so double up on damage. This is the main reason why you want to create these 2 by 2s with gases in the first place. And you just create a very simplified 2x2. Two two. Now, if you know that there are going to be propanes on the wave, sometimes you want to elongate your tunnels here so that the zombies don't get all jammed up. Especially if you're doing this solo, guys. I would recommend elongating these walls. Because what will happen is the zombies will be so jam-packed that the, the propaners will view it as they can't move forward. So they'll, what the, what'll happen is they will just jam up on this square, you know, it only takes two or three zombies just to jam up and a propane will be behind them. And they go, oh, I can't move. And it's the same way if you stand in front of a propane uh, while he's trying to get to, say, a ride the lightning van. He'll just stop moving, throw the propane tank at his feet, and then, you know, if there's propane tanks nearby, it'll cause a chain reaction. It'll be no bueno for all involved. Again, the double gas. This this tunnel is so less traffic than the other one that you really don't need um, to double gas this hallway. I probably should have put a electric field there. Sick of this. I will uh, for the audio impaired. I will tear this down and I will put it back up as an electric field. Just in case somebody can't hear my lovely voice, they are more than welcome to see my great deeds. Of course, my great deeds are all over YouTube now, as I've soloed my Twine Peak Storm Shield Defense 10 and put that all over YouTube for some shameless self-promotion. Now, if you had drop traps, you could put drop traps here. I don't really like the, fl the frame rate lag, and the only thing I find that makes it through this tunnel are smashers, blasters, and occasionally the fat husky husk. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these back up because I know propanes rarely come from this direction. 
So there's what happens with the blasters and smashers is they're so darn tall that as you can see here, my head is above the thing, but if I was a blaster, you know, I'd be looming over me right here. So as they come out of this tunnel, they take a step or two up. They're already underneath the gas strap, and because it's a smasher or a blaster, they move a little bit slower. They're going to dilly-dally, uh, especially the blasters have weird pathing, but the smasher is pretty straightforward. But uh, you want to kind of create that affliction damage, especially if you have a item such as the Grave Digger, which causes additional damage to afflicted targets. Making sure that all, all targets that you have in your view are afflicted can really be a major difference in balancing the ninja's damage. Um, now I'm using a ninja here. If you had an outlander, it'd be the same. If you had a, um, if you had a constructor, it would absolutely be the same. Wish I could. You know, you really just want to balance the damage out as much as possible between your guns, your traps, and yourself. And part of that is building the way you like. Um, now, for instance, I put slow spikes here, and I never really explained that. A lot of people like to use retractable floor spikes. Um, as you can tell, I only have two of them there. That's not the reason I'm not putting them down. Simply because when they get thrown back here, I want them to get back to that wall launcher as slow as possible. Simply because my wall launchers are god roll wall, wall launchers. Triple reload, double impact. As far as legacy traps go, they were the best wall launchers you could get. Um, and by the time they get back to the square, this wall launcher will have only let through maybe one or two zombies that didn't actually die on this square. Um, so it's when you when you chain them together, you know, if, if the zombies are just coming in a constant flow, it's really difficult for them to get past this, plus all the slow spikes that uh, keep them managed well enough so that propanes don't throw it at their feet. Now you'll see I am using 130 gas traps. Um, they are fully legendary. I use the double crit chance and double crit damage, as well as the effect duration. But if you wanted to use 106s, uh, obviously when you just get into twine, you probably don't have a great abundance of 106s. As far as traps, you want to make 106 as soon as you get into twine. I would say your gas traps are probably the top of the list. Um, next would probably be your wall launchers, because you don't really want to be falling behind the level you could probably abstain a little bit when you first come out of twine because you're only in 76 and 82 zones i believe yeah 82 zones it's been a while since i've gone through twine guys um so you really don't want to overuse your char black mineral powder all right so we got this all done this up I'm very obscure. But uh, as far as doing your... Sorry, I kind of got off on a tangent there. As far as doing your Twine Peak Storm Shield defenses, uh, 106 fully legendary gas traps, more than enough. Now, once we get up here... These walls will prevent smashers from running at your walls if they get close enough. It is fairly difficult for a smasher to get close enough. If for some reason you don't have the highest level traps, you don't have the greatest traps, you're still in Twine Peaks, you know, you, you recognize that you need to chain as much of your traps as possible. What you could do here is just add a few things like so. Wall darts, wall darts, because what's going to come up here is just going to be smashers, and if you're really lacking on damage on your traps, regular husk won't make it through here, because you're comboing so many traps at once. These these 2 by 2s are really meant to challenge waves that are challenging for you in the first place. So you really don't need to worry about your trap damage below. But as far as up top, you're going to notice the smashers come through kind of thing. Um, and right now, there is a glitch in Fortnite where wall darts will shoot through the stairs. So I'm just going to put a stairs there. No big deal. You can put a retractable floor spike here. And a ceiling zapper. Ceiling zappers are wonderful traps. 
to put at a higher level than you are simply because they use mechanical parts. Also, I know a lot of you cringe when I say mechanical parts because who these days has a ton of mechanical parts unless you're doing expeditions on the daily and you're only doing a couple missions a day, then maybe your mechanical parts are stacking up. Assuming, of course, you have the relevant expedition level. But as far as ceiling zappers go, you're only going to place, you know, three or four a match tops, which is, you know, 12 mechanical parts. It'll do the same damage as a rocket when it fires off if you hit them and if your rocket's any good. Um, so, so for, say, my bazooka, it's obsidian. It probably do, does a little bit less damage than my actual ceiling zappers. As you can tell, a little bit less, quote unquote, but 20,000 less, 21,000, give or take. But mechanical parts are great. You could stack up on ceiling zappers really easily, especially now that they're 200. It's actually efficient to, you know, keep 100 or so on you. If you're just going to keep 20 or so on you, it'd be more efficient just to keep them in stacks because it uses three kinds of materials and it uses such insignificant amounts aside from nuts and bolts that you really don't want to leave, you know, minimal amounts of zappers in your inventory. So that's why you see I have a stack of 171s. They're legacy. They're very bad rolls. I recognize it, but they're still the highest damage trap that I could do. Um, obviously, gas traps deal a considerable amount if they crit there. As you can see, the crit, crit chance and crit damage. But as far as just zappers go, uh, zappers are a great finish to a tunnel and again because the smasher is coming through the tunnel and he's probably a little bit larger than everything else it's going to set off that zapper now there has been a glitch in fortnite recently where ceiling zappers haven't been going off when they're over retractable floor spikes when they're over freeze traps when they're over flame frame uh flame grill traps sorry about that sometimes get a little bit tongue-tied so you really want to make sure that your zappers are firing off when they can. Best way to do this, just go into a mission, test it out. Even if that means, you know, building a floor and retreat or rescue the survivors. And building a ceiling piece and just testing out which floor traps the ceiling zapper goes off with. I mean, it could just be a general glitch in Fortnite where the ceiling zappers just aren't going off and maybe it's a legacy ceiling zapper glitch. You can never really tell. Um, so just keep that in mind when doing it. But as far as the east side of our storm shield defense, this is absolutely on lockdown. Um, because the level of my traps, it will be good all the way until about 8 or 9. And I say about 8 because usually about storm shield defense 7 or 8, the mobs are coming through so heavily that 37 durability on your wall launchers will not be enough for these two squares. You're going to get 90% of the wave coming through these tunnels. So you're about halfway 60% through the wave on 8. You should have to drop down here. You easily done from the top. That's the way I usually do it. I'll just show you what I do. Just so you can kind of maintain your tunnels here. You just select your wall darts in your trap or your wall launchers drop down here real fast duck in here put one down duck in here put one down and the reason you duck in there is for obvious reasons if there are bees they're gonna be throwing bees at you which will get blocked by the walls and if there are blasters the blasters will be shooting at you which will also be blocked by the walls but as far as this tunnel goes we're all set last thing i will explain though is this little cubby hole recommended to me by my friend metal uh for privacy reasons i won't mention his full name though just in case he enjoys his freedom from the YouTube and the hordes. Um, basically, you just stand here. Positioning is everything on this one. For instance, if you stand down here or over here and wait for them to come out of this hole, what it'll do is the wall launcher will launch them against here, and then some of the smaller zombies will start taking swipes at this wall. It'll only happen progressively, so about one or two swipes every three seconds, give or take. But you really want to not cause that because you're going to be so busy with the blasters and possibly propanes possibly smashers you're not really going to keep track of repairing that wall as thoroughly plus metal doesn't always repair the fastest as we know so you might not be able to keep up with the period if there is a large enough wave and if you're soloing it so you can just stand up here the blasters will come up they'll literally come up here or they'll come over here and you just shoot them um, it gives you a good glimpse of your tunnel. Now, if there are propane tanks, I would recommend you stand, uh, let's see if I were to narrow it down. I would recommend you stand about over there, which is obviously a joke, guys. But 
just stand back. You don't want the propanes to lock onto you and throw their propane tanks through the tunnel because your tunnel is co very compact. Also, they're throwing it uphill, probably, if they're coming through this tunnel, which is no bueno. Now, if there are propane tanks on wave 7 or 8, you need to redo your wall launchers on the end because, you know, your wall launchers don't have much durability like my legacy ones. I would recommend you just stay way back. You don't have to bother with it because honestly, this this wall is more than enough with whatever is left over there. And that's the reason why we put gas traps here because ceiling zappers are nice. They deal a little bit of damage, but the main benefit to them is that they deal it over a wide variety of, of squares. You know, they do the three by three. As you can see at the bottom, target enemies in a three by three tile range around trap, which isn't isn't as much as you think. So basically, if uh, we come out here, if we were to put a ceiling zapper on the front here, it would target it would target pretty much this. A little bit shorter though, so right about here. It doesn't fully target the the edge of it. Granted, these walls are right on the half point, but it would target about everything else. Now I'm going to leave that and tear it down later because nobody needs to watch four minutes of me tearing down a blueprint for that. And I'm finally going to move on to the north side, guys. I know it's been a, a little bit of a lengthy stream so far, so bear with me. Um, I don't want to put a wall there. That is uh, just slightly different. i got to build this from their spawn. Because I'm not uh, not entirely familiar. The way I do things here. Now, I did build this up for myself and a friend. However... When I built it up for myself, and this is the reason I ended up building up for my friend as well. Um, I gotta see what this meteor drops. I think I'm one square too far out. We'll see. Um, the reason I built it for my friend is because after I built this on my own, they never actually attacked this place again. I was a bit disappointed. For obvious reasons. So just gonna... See where it's at. Okay, good. Again, making my floor pieces out of stone. Not really a big deal unless there's a lot of propane tanks. I believe this meteor is a bit more finicky than the other side, so even though I'm going to build it very similar to it, I'm really not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to build a blaster or a lava shield here. Again, you know, some people like to fight in their tunnels. Nothing against that. Sometimes the lava just like to chuck things at your tunnels, and that's also no bueno, so... Now, if you're doing your Storm Shield Defense 1, odds are you can't actually go out this far and buy out this far. I mean, probably right about here, give or take, is where you could come out to. But you could still build this backside. It's really no issue. I would say, you know, build a couple half walls, put dynamos, and chain your wall darts on them. But don't don't bother putting them above level 2, because it won't really matter. You're gonna be destroying them soon enough. For the first five or so waves, they really do come pretty relatively difficult or relatively hard from these angles. Um, now I'm gonna keep these little half falls. Oops. Yes, okay. Oops. Mm. Right, right.
Getting a little bit flustered here. Losing my mind. It's okay. It's a Fortnite thing. You just roll with it. Knock on wood. I create that there just to support it all. Again, everything here you can put to level 3. Turns out that level bomb is not as finicky, however it does change spots. That is one of the ones that changes spots. So I'm not exactly relieved. Um, I do need to remake this, however, because I wanted to... Yeah, sometimes they throw nature smashers at you, so you really want to be careful with your placements. Pack and flash. I create my door on this side because that amplifier is the easiest to defend. Well, one of the easier ones to defend. So I know that's going to be my first one to place. Again, I'm I'm kind of blowing through resources absurdly fast here because I am on a Sarahotep Ninja without a hotfixer in my support slot. I think I'm sure I can master, but for the sake of building fast, I just like my Ninja. Now, if they are going to throw nature at you and they're you know their nature, you just want to be a little bit extra careful. Just put these stone walls up here. Make sure to put these partition walls in between them. Also do that like so. Which one do? Wall darts, wall darts. Wall darts, wall darts. Again, the wall darts will go through these. These stairs, so you really don't have to worry too much about it. And we're just going to create kind of a systematic tunnel here. Okay, so I want them to go up there, which means I do want to block this off, which means wall darts. Now there are a lot of propane. Oh, that was a good. There are a lot of propanes that come this way. Place, if you put a defender here, it might not always go as well as you think. But if you don't, you should be okay regardless. Put some alternates there. Wall darts, wall darts. Sorry. Dynamos, 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 dynamos. More dynamos. Some more dynamos. Probably some dynamos. Dynamos, dynamos. I put dynamos on these corners instead of wall launchers because I really don't want to push them back here because there are a lot of propane waves, so you just kind of want to let them through to an extent. Just let them have their own path until the traps take them out. Don't really focus too much on pushing them back, except for, you know, main causeways where there's more than enough room for zombies to move around, and... These ones you have to make lengthwise. Over here. On these corners, you really want to make sure that they get hit the full time. Um, just put them there. This will ensure that the wall dynamos both go off because the wall dynamos will go off right about here. That one will go off, but this one needs it to be in front of it. So if you're obviously, you could see like I'm standing right here which is just off the tile range, which is kind of nice. It's almost like the electric field in that way that it'll fire off. 
but if they just come through here and they come through here even with slow spikes it might be too fast and this wall dynamo might not hit them so that's why you place this wall right here um, now we get on to the floor traps you see my absurd love for slow spikes absolutely beautiful traps for storm shield defenses a little bit expensive to trap for everyday use um, but if you get the hang of it and uh, you can set up a one by one tunnel by all means do it up gas traps when they start i am going to put electric fields here um, simply because there's going to be so much traffic there and there's going to be so much traffic here you're just going to be coming through you can hit a large variety of people and zombies This is more of a conventional trap tunnel. You know, you really want to stack up the damage. Now, I would recommend putting some stairs here. Sometimes they like to beat against these. You don't really need to put them at high level. Just, you know, a different, uh, a different material than what you built all this out of. So that in case there's a element bonus, you really don't have to worry about it. That's why I built a stone behind this metal. Just in case there's nature. They'll definitely view that as a deterrent. These don't need to be level 3, so I don't know why I'm upgrading them. Gaseous, gaseous, gaseous. Now I put a dynamo on this one instead of a instead of a wall launcher simply because they come through here very often. So that's why we put the gas trap there. Really just kind of do damage over time there as they walk through, create the affliction damage. The mobs will will build up a lot here as well because of the double causeway. They'll come from here and sometimes they'll drop down and come from the bottom here. Usually it's only like one or two zombies a wave, but it's enough where they'll just beat against the wall and whatever you put here. So even if you put a wall launcher on the dynamo wall right there, if what will happen is they'll be knocked back and sometimes they'll just glitch out, hit this wall and be flung flung off, you know, two squares away and then just come back from there. So it's not a really a big deal. You save yourself a structure just by putting that there. Um, you put these walls here so that zombies don't just walk down and straight to the tunnel there. You just put them. They come around, gas trap fires off, they get a little bit of affliction, they take some zapper, and then they get more affliction by the time they're here. And by that time, I mean, the affliction damage isn't still taking, you know, at six seconds of affliction, so it will last to the square, but then it'll just reapply it. It'll just keep going through. Um, you do put a gas trap upon a gas trap here just because the wall launcher is right here, so it's not a big deal. Um, because of this wall here, zombies are going to be walking like this so this wall launcher can indeed fire off and I think this is the sole one I'm gonna make like so and the only reason I make it like so is because they're gonna be coming like so launch back here they'll be in this back corner where nothing's being trafficked obviously you see my walking path is right here so if things are flying all the way back there there it's not really building up on the square until they get back to here but by that time you know 60 percent of them will be dead already and we really don't have to worry about them jamming up on top of it yes. as far as bs to resistance traps go you can put you know ceiling zapper here ceiling zapper there be surprised if they make it here but like i said earlier if your traps are a little bit weak you can absolutely you know just double up on traps you got the wall darts wall dynamos you put some retractable floor spikes here. You know, I don't have more retractable floor spikes, but you can just put them there as well. And because of your walls, your smashers aren't going to be charging at them, so you'll actually see them walk across all your traps, which I think is phenomenal. I think if a smasher charges and they walk through a whole bunch of traps, but the tra traps don't activate fast enough, I think that's kind of ridiculous. But that's just me. Um, as far as the north side goes, that is that is pretty much it. Now we're going to move on to the west side. West side, incredibly easy. You might not have all the room in the world to 
build this up. But that's fine too. Nope. Because this one is easily done with, you know, one dragon ninja and a whole lot of dragon slashing. Go like this. Go like this. Oh, actually, that one I'm going to keep. I'll keep them both. Why not? The reason why I did that is because I didn't want them walking up here and then around. But that's easily fixed by just going like this. Now you gotta put the double walls there because they can walk up this side part. So if they break the ceiling right here and they walk up, they'll just walk around to the side here. Kind of like how we do. I mean, I had to jump there, but that's only because this part's right here. If I didn't, we just walk right up. Like I did so. This one is fairly easy. I wouldn't recommend taking these buildings to level 3, except for this wall right here. I would recommend taking it to level 3. Now if you had, for some reason, multiple wall launchers with alternating reload speed, this would be an amplifier, an amplifier for you. Or this direction at least. Because you would launch them from here, and then here you would want to place your fastest reloading wall launcher absolutely ridiculous amounts you would want to put it on this wall just because if they're propanes this wave which there are a lot of propanes that come from the west side an absurd amount of propanes come from this direction all the time even when you build the B amplifier here absurd amounts of, of zombies come with propanes so what we want to do is we just want to put a fast reload speed wall launcher right here just so if they get launched here and for some reason they're not dead yet um, again this is where having gas traps leveled up will really benefit you they're gonna die you want alternating traps to create a large tool of destruction Are you serious? I would recommend putting a retractable force spike there. I'm gonna see if I have the materials for it, but I don't think I do. That's reasonable. I don't have rusty mechanical parts, but you wanna put a retractable force spike right there. Just create all the damage in the world. Here is not so much. Here you can just kind of be relaxed with your traps. And again, this is your soul trap tunnels. So you're really going to want to put a lot of gas traps everywhere. Just so as they walk through, because your wall launchers won't be able to keep up with them. Sorry. I know it's uh, I know it's disheartening to look at reality, but your gas traps will absolutely, or your wall launchers will absolutely not be able to keep up with the wave. So you want your gas traps there so that they can. So as they walk through here, it's just the gas traps. Now, last but not least, we're moving on to the south side. Now the south side is where you want to build your first amplifier. As you can see, I built my amplifier A there. Um, as far as defenses go, you don't need a lot. This side should be flingers or propane tanks, possibly a smasher wave, but even if it's a smasher wave, it's not a big deal. Now, we're just going to put some traps everywhere here. It's very basic, guys. Like, you don't need to go overboard on this side. They're not going to be attacking it incredibly. So you don't need anything major. Just something to funnel them in. Um, again, if you're using a Dragon Ninja, absolutely recommended. No problem. And floor traps my blood floor spikes um i will show you the rolls i have on them they're the exact same as my gas traps with the exception of the final perk 
Heals the Tash building 3.2% of its max health every 10 seconds. Not a big deal. Crit rating, crit damage. I didn't really find anything on the slow spikes that really drew me in as far as perk wise. I would have liked it if they had added, you know, this slows enemies down 30% more, you know. Obviously the, sl the slow spikes are meant to slow down an enemy. Um, but even something as, as incremental as 10% probably is a lot more reasonable for Epic. Because if it's if it's more than that, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a 130 floor spike, Sorry. but it's absolutely godly in terms of slowing down smashers. Um, you almost don't need a wall launcher to keep them on a square, but uh, that's pretty much the the secret to my one by one godliness is I just put down a 130 floor spike and they just can't get out. Um, I'll show that in a moment here. Actually, I could just build a one by one right here. I think you guys will have enough space for it. Um, now see, I don't want to build it too close to the amplifier, so I don't think I'm going to build it here. You know what I'll do? I'll build it up top so you guys can see. Because there is absolutely enough room. I'll put those there. Just because this is the last side, I will give you guys a little bit of my secrets here. So what I do, instead of the 106s, I just put these, which, you know, reload faster, but the reload doesn't really matter. All I'm looking for on these ones is the slow effect. Damage-wise, not a big difference, even with the double crit chance and double crit damage. And then I'm going to add this. Now as well, just in case there's nature damage, I'm going to add this little buffer box. And I'm also going to upgrade it. Just in case the smasher gets the wise idea to break it up, just because of this wall here. Actually this wall doesn't need to be here. This wall is useless on the one by one square. You want to put your wall on the back side of it, wherever they're going to come through at. Not where they're entering, but where they're coming through. Keep in mind the terminology. What will happen is these will fire off. Keep them right here, knock down, they'll get back up, and then they'll like... Let's see if I can move my controller slow enough so that it mimics their speed. Like mm, Moving, yeah, right about that speed. So it's really slow compared to most zombies. Like most zombies you could outrun just by walking fast without shooting or aiming. But this speed is, is a little bit faster, so probably about this speed is as a zombie speed. And then as far as slow me downs go, it's like it slows them to a crawl. A little bit slower than that. And by the time they get back to this wall or even get around it, the wall launch is gonna go back off, keep them under these the gas traps, and that's all due to, the, to these 130 floor spikes. Now 106s work perfectly fine in two squares for Twine Peaks up until about Storm Shield Defense 8. But as far as 130s go, to keep them in that one one square, two square radius, you really want 130 floor spikes. Um, because I had a lot of carved twine when I was going through Twine Peaks, I really didn't have to worry about... Uh, I really didn't have to worry about upgrading my floor spikes and because I only used them very sparingly. Um, I was able to accumulate a considerable amount, um, and thanks to some donations from a friend, now that they've made card fine incredibly difficult to get, I can still make them. Um, but I did bring up one that are 106s, obviously you saw the perks on them, I'll, I'll probably make those, you know, one, one, 154 I believe is the next one. So obviously you see the structures left in place there, and that's something I'll touch on right now at the end. Is That's because I still have two amplifiers that are built already. It's kind of hard to tell over here. I'm going to go show you guys what I mean. You shouldn't worry about the structure limit, to be honest with you, because if you build this way, you'll be able to destroy them as you go, and I know a lot of people don't like that. 
Um, so you can see I've, I've got this already built. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that you have to destroy your tunnels and climb peaks. That's natural. I hate the fact that I have to destroy my tunnels, especially that beautiful one that we built to the north. You'll see this one is all completely built. These are the defenses I did for Twine 10. They're still intact. A little bit beaten up, as you see. I thought those wall launchers ran out. Oh, you see it down the hollow they did. They're just two by twos. This side didn't get hit, but we broke it down. Because it's right on the edge. Anyways, you guys really don't have to worry about structures placed. Just build what you can. Eventually, they'll stop attacking directions. Some of them will be obvious. For instance, your amplifier A and B, they won't attack from the south or the west after you place them, which will be your first two waves. So you really, that's why I didn't go too significant on the defenses for either of those sides. I did a little bit towards the west, um, simply because we're going to be putting amplifier A first over there to the south. So we really don't want to jam this full of traps and whatnot that you'll have to tear down have to spend a lot of time tearing it down and even though all of us have an outlander somewhere pathfinder hopefully if you're lucky to put in your support slot you know tearing down is not the object of the game you want to build up you want to defend and uh, hopefully in the future they really increase the structure limit to twine peaks because that's just one of the many drawbacks to it uh, but as far as twine peaks storm shield defense your main storm shield your defenses should be fully built now and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I will be doing other videos for amplifiers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 uh, at a later date. Stay tuned, and uh, if you like the video, feel free to subscribe.